I would say a long-term perspective. It's not a perspective that we have for the next few years. <laughs> Most of the antidepressants um, that we have so far, they came from <clears throat> uh, ideas uh, that were born in the, in the 40s and the 50s. And the traditional medicines that we use for depression are the same, basically. Uh, very recently, there is um, a lot of interest in another substance, which is ketamine. Um, ketamine appears to have a significant antidepressant effect, at least from a few studies that have been published, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies already. Uh, but the time course of um, the type of results you find with uh, ketamine is different from the time course that we find with ayahuasca. In other words, um, with ketamine, what people have found is that the, the most significant effect occurs one day after the treatment session, and, and then um, the effect starts uh, going back. Um, so that seven days after the treatment session, you almost don't have any more effect. This is a very interesting result if you consider that most of the traditional treatment for depression, um, the medications that we have available so far, most of them you have to wait for about um, two weeks to 20 days in order to reach the desired effect of the medicine. And for both ketamine and ayahuasca, it seems as though you have a more acute effect. So a few days later, you already have an effect, uh, which is uh, very interesting in the scenario of mental uh, disorder treatment as a whole, because then we might be um, moving towards an alternative um, of a new maybe a new line of antidepressant or new strategies uh, around uh, antidepressants um, that would be uh, pretty much associated with these type of substances, so psilocybin, ayahuasca, and ketamine. Uh, one thing that's very important to point out is that all of these studies are very preliminary. Um, discoveries in this field, they are really slow, naturally slow, and, 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 and I believe this is a very prudent movement. Um, so, you know, what I'm saying is that um, this is, I would say, a long-term perspective. It's not a perspective that we have for the next few years. Uh, so, we should not say, you know, <clears throat> we should not expect that uh, in a few years um, these type of substances, ayahuasca, psilocybin, uh, maybe ketamine a little bit earlier, uh, but uh, it, it will take a little bit longer until, we, um, and, until, the, until clinical trials have come to a point where you are, are um, you know, more comfortable with the idea that that is a new um, treatment. There are many other studies that uh, are being conducted. So, for instance, um, our study that we just did, we did a single intervention with ayahuasca. It's not a treatment. We just did one intervention and we observed what that intervention did to a group of uh, 30 patients. So, it's, it's really preliminary in a sense that naturally the next step is to increase the population, increase the number of individuals being uh, accessed uh, by that medication, by ayahuasca. Um, understand what are the... Uh, uh, so, what is... Is there a treatment scheme? So, you have to do the next step, which is um, try to understand how would you use this substance into a treatment scenario. Um, not as a single intervention as we did. So there is a long road ahead until I believe that this type of medicine becomes available um, to a you know a broader um, public, a broader public of patients. Yeah. Oh,